Hello Internet, welcome to the second video in the series of network functions. Today we will discuss time and frequency domain analysis for electrical networks. Now the reason why we express electrical networks in S domain is uh, the fact that using Laplace transform electrical networks are much more uh, simpler to solve. So the first key point here is that electrical networks are easier to solve and analyze using Laplace transform uh, and Transforming any network into Laplace domain is known as S domain transformation. So another key point is S domain transformation. And in this video we'll talk about the S domain transformation of the most commonly featured elements in an electrical network. Uh, we'll talk about the transformation of R. We'll talk about transformation of L and C in S domains. And once we do that, uh, you could you could simply remember those transformations in further questions to solve. For example, we'll form a table where all the results will be written, and you could remember those results even if you do not wish to remember the entire uh, theory behind it. Uh, but in this particular video, we'll talk about S domain transformation of all the three passive elements which are used in the electrical networks. So first, if we talk about uh, the resistor and to analyze a resistor and to transform it into S domain we'll need to uh, see what it looks like first let us say we have some voltage connected to a resistor now this particular diagram here is is the time domain diagram of the electrical network and once transformation is done what all things will change? This V will be expressed in X, S domain. Then uh, we'll talk about the fate of this resistor and I will also be expressed in the S domain. And what should be the value of R? What, what changes will happen in R after the transformation is what we need to C and consequently we will put on an inductor here and a capacitor here to see what changes this transformation does on these elements. So <clears throat> first things first this resistor is not a frequency dependent uh, passive element so its value remains as it is in Laplace domain this is this is the rule of thumb or you could you could say that a key point to remember but even if you wish to uh, formulate this theory you could simply say that voltage is expressed like this in time domain using Ohm's law and taking Laplace on both sides will give us so the value of R or the impedance that we are talking about in this diagram becomes this in <coughs> the S domain And 
this is known as the transform impedance another key point here now the transform impedance in this particular case is the resistor itself because <coughs> the the value of resistor is not frequency dependent so no additional uh, fre frequency domain uh, operator like S will feature here so this is an important thing to remember and similarly from from this <coughs> from this very relation we can derive that 1 upon R is Is upon Vs and this is G or conductance so this again becomes something that you you can commit to your memory and the same rule applies with conductance it's it is not it's not being multiplied or divided by any s uh, which is uh, as a matter of fact the the frequency domain component and <clears throat> moving on to uh, the equivalent circuit for inductor when we talk about inductor what happens is we'll we'll draw the same uh, things here where a voltage is connected to the inductor l and everything which is happening here is in time domain we need to transform this into frequency domain using laplace transform so we'll see what happens here this v voltage takes up the form vs current takes up the form is and we'll see what happens to this inductor here so we know that the voltage v of t is equivalent to l d i by dt in this particular case it is it so taking laplace transform on both sides we get v of s on the left hand side and laplace of now this is the initial value theorem by the way and <clears throat> uh, this the the Laplace transform of this T i T by D T is given by this where the uh, I of 0 minus is the uh, initial current through the inductor and by the native property of the inductor we know that uh, as soon as a voltage is connected uh, to an inductor the same amount of voltage is mounted on top of the inductor uh, and the current through uh, the inductor starts to build up uh, slowly we've studied the 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 magical property of inductor that whenever a DC is connected to an inductor an exact amount of DC voltage source is connected to an inductor an exact voltage is developed on the inductor thereby causing the initial current to be zero and this property is needed to be remembered here because over here we need to substitute the value as zero from that inference so so what we get here is um, the the only term which is left here is s into i of s multiplied by the inductance so the value of uh, Vs upon Is 
which is the impedance that we are looking for uh, becomes equivalent to S into L. And this is a very important uh, commit to memory inference that we can remember that <coughs> the Laplace transform of inductor becomes equivalent to S into the value of the inductance. So whenever transformation occurs, this transformation will, will modify this L into S of L. So this is as simple as that. For example, if you have a network where a series arm has two Henry inductance and 5 ohm resistor, if you want to transform this to S domain, so this will simply become twice of S and this 5 will remain 5. So you can see a direct implementation of this thing, this transformation is applied onto one branch of this network. So we have two results in hand now. The first result is the value of R remains as it is after transformation. The second result is the value of L changes to S into L after transformation. And now we go on to find the value of capacitance in a branch. So again, we'll need to transform this thing So when a transformation occurs we need to check the value of capacitance how does it get gets modified so what we're looking for is something here and again <clears throat> starting from the very very basic formula for capacitance in time domain that the current through a capacitor is given by uh, this formula the very basic formula for capacitor and <clears throat> now taking Laplace on both the sides will give me I of S into where V0 minus represents initial voltage across capacitor. Now this is a corollary from the uh, Laplace transform, the, the initial value theorem is applied here. When we open up uh, this differentiation to get the Laplace transform, initial value uh, of this voltage needs to be put up here. Uh, you can look up for this corollary in uh, the properties of Laplace transform. But the fact of the matter is the, the nature of the capacitor, the very basic nature of the capacitor, the magical property of the capacitor which says that uh, the capacitor starts to block the, the current through it uh, but it does so eventually. So what I can say is that the initial voltage across capacitor is zero because uh, whenever a capacitor is connected to any voltage source at time zero all the current in the world 
flows through the capacitor and only when capacitor realizes that uh, some amount of charge is being built up on the walls of the capacitor it starts to block that current so uh, capacitor is one uh, such device that allows um, current jumps not voltage jumps so the key point here is the capacitor allows uh, current jumps not voltage jumps now by current jumps we mean that at time t is equivalent to zero the current in the capacitor goes to its maximum value all the current passes through it and eventually it starts to block the current in case of DC and the exact opposite property of inductor is it allows voltage jumps the voltage across the inductor becomes maximum um, which is equivalent to the voltage connected to it and then it starts to uh, allow the current to pass through it uh, gradually so these two properties of current jumps and voltage jumps in capacitor and inductor respectively uh, are what are going to determine these initial values. So the initial voltage across capacitor will be zero from this discussion. So if you, if you are uh, not clear about uh, why if you're not clear why, about the reason why we put the initial value as zero, you need to look up for the rationale uh, in uh, the rationale for this in the basic properties of inductor and capacitor. That being said, everything becomes easy then. I of S becomes equivalent to uh, C into S V S or we are looking for Vs upon Is which is the impedance for the capac capacitor in S domain and that becomes equivalent to 1 upon S into C. Now this again becomes very very important transformation. So the value of this C becomes equivalent to 1 upon C uh, multiplied by S. So the, this Laplace operator S uh, features in the denominator along with the C when it is transformed. So this is again one such thing that you can commit to your memory. So if we draw a table of the component and its impedance it will be like this. For resistor R, the impedance will stay R. For the inductor L, the impedance in uh, transformed impedance we are talking about. So this will be Z of S will become S of L and for capacitor it becomes 1 upon S of C. So if you remember this table well enough you can transform any electrical network into its equivalent S domain network in no time. And I hope the rationale is behind these transformations is also clear. And uh, this is what I had to discuss in this tutorial. And if you like the content of this tutorial, uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You have a great day ahead. Bye.